In today's video I want to take a look at competition law in Ireland and particularly what the protections are from competition law for small business owners and for SMEs and for entrepreneurs and startups and so on. So firstly the legislation in Ireland is primarily contained in the Competition Act 2002 and the Con Competition and Consumer Protection Act of 2000 and there are two main prohibitions in competition law in Ireland. One is the prohibition on anti-competitive arrangements and the second one is a prohibition on abuse of dominance. Both of these prohibitions are set out in part two of the Competition Act 2002. So to take a look at the first one first, anti-competitive arrangements. All agreements between undertakings that have their object or effect the prevention, restriction or distortion of competition in trade in any goods or services in the state are prohibited. So any undertaking or any agreement rather between undertakings or associations of undertakings, concerted practices which have the object or effect of the prevention, restriction or distortion of competition is prohibited. And the Act goes on then, Section 5, I think it is, or Section 4, to set out various instances of situations which are definitely anti-competitive and definitely fall within this. So any attempt, for example, to directly or indirectly fix the price or selling conditions or trading conditions in the market is prohibited. Likewise, any attempt to limit or control production, markets or technical development, share markets or sources of supply, this is also prohibited. Then applying dissimilar conditions to equivalent transactions with other trading parties, thereby placing them at a competitive disadvantage. This covers a situation where a small guy just starting off or perhaps with a small market share, I would doubt too much clout is having different conditions, different prices, etc., imposed upon him um, versus the bigger guy in the market. Then any um, conclusion of contracts subject to acceptance by the other parties of supplementary conditions, which have no connection with the uh, subject of such contract, uh, such contracts. These types of arrangements are prohibited by law. Now there are exceptions but these ones are certainly prohibited and essentially any agreements that will distort and have the object or effect of distorting the market are prohibited. The exceptions will include intra-group transactions because there is only one in undertaking recognised in law in intra-group transactions. This is a situation where you may have transfers between subsidiaries of one group. Likewise, employment contracts are not covered because an employee is not an undertaking, so the agreement would have to be between two undertakings. Further exceptions are set out in section 4.2 and 4.5, but basically the exceptions must fall within a category where they can be said to improve the production or distribution of goods um, while allowing consumers a fair share of the resulting benefit. So, if the exception is to be granted, well then the, uh, it must be a situation where the market conditions and consumers are actually benefited by the carry-on. The intention of the parties then, it's very wor uh, noteworthy that the intention of the parties is irrelevant, it doesn't make any difference. It's the object or effect of the agreement that needs to be reviewed to decide whether the act or the agreement is anti-competitive and therefore prohibited. Horizontal and vertical agreements then are worth mentioning here. A horizontal agreement is an agreement between competitors, in other words it's an agreement between undertakings at the same level in, in a supply chain. A vertical agreement on the other hand is an agreement between undertakings at different ends of the supply chain, for example manufacturers and distributors. The second major prohibition in competition law in Ireland is abuse of dominance. It is set out in Section 5 of the Competition Act 2002. It prohibits any abuse 
by one or more undertakings of a dominant position in trade or for any goods or services in the state or in any part of the state. Excuse me. This particular prohibition, as you can see, does not necessarily require two undertakings. One undertaking is enough to abuse a dominant position. There's no exemption either from this uh, prohibition. However, there's no accepted definition of a dominant position. Generally, more than 40% of a market share will raise a red flag and will uh, sort of create an inference that uh, an undertaking is in a dominant position. However, there is a number of factors that need to be looked at. For example, barriers to entry to the market, customers switching costs, barriers to expansion and the market share of the entry being looked at. As I say, over 40% will cause concern. These are the factors that will be looked at to see whether an undertaking has a dominant position or not. If it has a dominant position, well then, abuse of that position is prohibited. So looking at breach of dominance, you look at two things. One is the undertaking dominant and two has its conduct been an abuse of its dominance. The conduct is not abusive if it can be objectively justified and proportionate to a legitimate aim. Examples of abuse of dominance would include abuse of pricing or exclusionary abuse. For example, predatory pricing, single branding, loyalty rebates, refusal to supply, tying and bundling and so forth. So the penalties then for breaches of the Competition Act are very severe or can be very severe. It depends on what the actual uh, breach is and what, whether it's prosecuted on um, by way of a summary prosecution or on indictment in the circuit court. So summary and uh, prosecutions on indictment are possible. Fines of up to five million are possible for conviction on indictment in the circuit court and the prosecutions will be carried out by the uh, Competition Authority, whatever you call it. Um, the Com Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, formerly the Competition Authority, they can uh, bring prosecutions. The, an interesting factor as well is that the prosecutions can lead to personal liability for officers or employees of a company. So it's not enough for an officer or an employee of a company to hide behind the corporate veil and say that, well, you know, I didn't do anything wrong, it was the company, because uh, personal liability can arise. Any aggrieved person then can make a complaint to the Competition and Consumer Protection Commission or can bring legal proceedings in the circuit or high court for breach of the Competition Act. The aggrieved person, if successful, may obtain an injunction and or damages and or a declaration from court. And an interesting point to note is that the Competition Act of 2002 shifts the burden of proof from the prosecutor to the defendant in a criminal prosecution. <clears throat> so if you're a small business owner, the message is that there are protections in the Competition Act to prevent abuse of dominance or anti-competitive arrangements and if you feel that you are the victim of such practices then you know there are avenues open to you including in the first instance making a complaint to the uh, formerly the Competition Authority now they are as I say the Competition and Consumer Protection Commission and uh, you can pursue civil and um, civil proceedings as well in the courts. Hope you find this video useful. My <coughs> contact details are there on the screen. Um, if you find it useful, you might give it a thumbs up down below.